Hello, everyone, and welcome to the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. You can find me on Ravelry as a Liddy Knits Two, and on Instagram as Read Knit Run. Today is Sunday, February twenty fourth, and this is episode fifty six. Fifty six. Yeah. If you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad you found this channel. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And thank you so much for subscribing. So I have a few things to share with you guys today. By the way, this is my podcast about all my crafty hobbies, which have a lot to do with yarn. So I have some finished objects, some works in progress, and uh, some fitness progress to share with you guys. So let's get right into it. So I have two finished objects to share with you, but before I do that, let me talk about what I'm wearing. So this is a shawl that I designed last year. Yeah, last year. And uh, this is called the Serendipity Shawl. It's uh, basically written as a two color shawl, but I used a gradient set for one of the colors. So, this is a free pattern available on Ravelry in uh, D Hard House Designs. And it's just a really simple triangle shawl with um, color blocking. So, uh, it's written, like I said, for two colors. So, one color here for the solid, and then you pull in your second color to stripe. But I used a gradient set uh, for one of the colors to add a little more interest. So like I said, free pattern on Ravelry. And I love wearing this shawl. Okay, so my first finished object to share with you is a pair of socks. (laughs) So I finished a pair of socks for myself. Uh, They're still blocking a little bit on these sock blockers, but uh, yeah, these are knit out of Patton's Croy sock yarn, which I have the tag. This is my favorite sock yarn. It is so durable and it softens up over time and I just think it's really great. So the colorway is a striping colorway tourmaline stripes, which I'm probably not pronouncing correctly. (laughs) Wow. Uh, But yeah, there it is. Tourmaline stripes. And I still have quite a lot left over. I used um, two separate balls for these socks and I have a lot left over since I knit them as shorty socks. So I'm sure I'll figure out some kind of project to use that yarn up in later. But yeah, these are for me. So I knit them on US size one needles, which is a 2.25 millimeter, which is my favorite size needle to use for socks. I knit them cuff down with a short row heel. I did two by two ribbing for 20 rounds and didn't use any contrasting color for the heels or toes or anything like that. Uh, So this was meant to be a treadmill knitting. So. I like to walk on the treadmill before I do my run, and while I'm walking, I like to knit on something really quick and easy, so I like having a pair of socks on the go that doesn't have any patterning, and it's really easy to just knit, knit, knit. I don't have to think about it, so I can multitask walking on the treadmill while knitting a pair of socks. So, yep, these are finished, and I'm excited to... Uh, pack these for our camping trip that Michael and I just booked for spring break, which I'll tell you guys more about when we get closer to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I used 60 stitches for the sock. So 30 stitches in the front, 30 stitches in the back. And I knit them on two 16 inch circular needles. Um, So it's very much like the magic loop method, but with two needles instead of one. So yeah, there's a little better picture of the short row heel. Uh, I really like the short row heel. It's so easy to, like I said, I have it all memorized. I don't have to follow a pattern. I can just knit, knit, knit. There's the second heel. 
yep, didn't change colors or anything, just just went with it. So these will make great socks for hiking. Like I said, this yarn is so durable and I love making socks out of it. And I love wearing hand knit socks when we're out hiking and camping. So these will be great for that. Anyway, yay, a finished pair of socks. So my second finished object is a shawl and it's another shawl that I have designed. So uh, this is a DK weight shawl knit out of all one color, which is a little different for me because I like stripes and patterning on my shawls. So I went with a solid, solid color, but with patterning. So yep, it's finished and I love it, you guys. I love it. So uh, like I said, this is a DK weight yarn. And this is Baby B yarn, uh, so it's 100% acrylic, and the colorway is Sand Castle. And I did need to use uh, a full ball of yarn plus a little bit of a second ball. So it's a good size shawl. It is my wingspan, so from, oh, can I do it here? Yep, nope, okay. But yes, it goes from one hand all the way to the other. So it's a good size shawl. Um, I could have made it a little bit bigger, but I didn't. Um, I wanted to go for my wingspan and that's what I got. So it is a top-down triangle shawl and it's got this nice, simple seam down the middle. And it starts out as seed stitch and then transitions into this um, beaded style ribbing. And something I did differently with the bind off, uh, I did swatch for this shawl, and in my swatch I did the bind off in pattern, but I much prefer it on the shawl when I, I just did all knits for the bind off. And so the edge is so much cleaner than on my, um, than on my swatch. So, yeah, I did give this a little bit of a block just to straighten out those edges a little bit better, but I really like it. I do have a shawl on now, but um, I love the simple one color and it's DK weight. I did fold it over and I didn't need to, but yeah, I just... It looks so nice and it's going to go with so many pieces in my wardrobe and be uh, suitable to wear at work and to work and yeah so I'm really happy with it I just need to um, take some really nice pictures with it so it's finished it's off the needles and yeah I just have to do all the technical work of finishing typing up the pattern and putting in pictures and um, proofreading it before I post it on Ravelry for you guys so yep that is that so I have a few works in progress to share with you I have three works in progress and the first one is a pair of socks for my mother uh, I have finished the first sock which I did show you guys on the previous episode and the second sock <laughs> is almost finished. All I have to do is the toe. Yep, that's it. Just the toe. <laughs> so um, this is another pattern that I'm writing. So what I, what I like to do when I'm writing patterns for socks is as I'm knitting the first sock, I make notes on my pattern. So I have a plan and then sometimes plans change. So while I'm knitting the first sock, I make notes of those um, things that I liked and things I didn't like that I want to keep the same and change in the pattern. So then what I, what I did is I took all those notes and I edited the pattern uh, and then printed out my written pattern and I follow it while I knit the second sock. So it gives me a chance to really, really proofread my pattern for you guys. So, um, yeah, all I have to do is the toe and 
I need to print the page with the new chart that I made for the toe because uh, there were some changes that I made. So once I get that printed, um, I'll follow the new chart that I made and make sure that it, it actually works out and then the sock will be finished and then I will have a pattern to share with you guys. So, yep, these are knit out of Premier Yarns uh, sock weight yarn and the colorway is just white. Um, my mom requested white socks and I wanted to add a little bit of pattern detailing to it. So it has this pattern running down the front, which is a four row repeat, which makes it really nice to uh, memorize and do on the go. Yep. Knits and pearls. There's this mock cable running down here. So there's no actual um, cabling. There's... You know, it's just knits and pearls, basically. I did twist it rib at the top. I wanted a really fancy sock to give my mom. Um, and then the patterning, like I said before, continues down the toe of the sock. So I did make um, small changes to my previous chart. And uh, I did make those changes while knitting this, so... The second sock should look the same. I just have to proofread it, you know? But yeah, I'm almost, almost there. Really excited. Uh, I want to get, get these finished, get pictures taken, and post a pattern for y'all. So <laughs> the pictures always get me. Anyway, um, so it's just fingering weight yarn. I used US size one needles. But, um, you know, you could use whatever size you need for the gauge. I did a short row heel, which I have instructions for how to do the short row heel in the pattern. And yes, yeah, so this is going to be one that's charted. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm thinking of naming this pattern after my mom. And I need to ask her permission first. So that's my thought on this pattern. Since I totally designed them with her in mind, I'd really like to name the pattern after her. So I'm going to ask her permission and then I will let you guys know next time. So my next work in progress is living in my sweater size Mario bag and it's Michael's sweater. Michael is my husband. So I've made a bit of progress. I am knitting a Jared Flood pattern called the Ranger. And it's a bottom up sweater. Gotta have that. If you don't have a messy tape measure in your bag, you are not a real knitter. Just kidding. Um, so I just uh, caked up another skein of yarn because I finished another skein while knitting this sweater, so it was a good pausing point for the podcast, but I have the next one all ready to go, which is good. So I did finish both sleeves of the sweater, and I've started the body, which, like I said, is knit bottom up. So I have about six and a half inches here from the bottom edge all the way up. And I'm showing you the wrong side, apparently. There we go. <laughs> so six and a half inches from the cast on edge to where I am now. And it looks so good. And the yarn is very comfortably soft without being too soft and it's squishy because it's worsted weight. It's so squishy and I'm very excited. So yes, it is knit flat. Um, so there is some purling involved, which I'm fine with. I am knitting these on US size eight needles, which is a five millimeter. This is a part of my interchangeable set. I have the Knitter's Pride Melodies of Life interchangeable needles. Um, but yeah, this was a full skein and a little bit 
a little bit of another skein that was left over from the sleeves. So that's why I have these ends right here is that I started with the ball that was left over from the sleeves and I was only able to do like four the cast on edge plus four rounds which doesn't seem like a lot but I'm gonna use every yard if I have to <laughs> and it may come to that so uh, yeah, this six and a half inches here is about one skein of the worsted weight yarn. So I hope I have enough. It does suggest a US size eight. Interesting. I usually don't end up using the needle size in a pattern. <laughs> I usually have to um, change it. And sometimes I have to go up a needle size and sometimes I have to go down, but Anyway, um, yeah, I am, here are the two sleeves. I, oh my gosh, I want to get this done. I want to get this just, yeah. So the yarn I'm using for Michael's sweater is Cloudborn Highland Worsted in the Charcoal Heather colorway. So this is from Craftsy. Uh, it is a worsted weight yarn for a worsted weight pattern and uh, this is 100% fine highland wool and it's so delectable it's so far I'm very pleased with it um, I have not used this yarn before in a project so I'm really excited to see how it looks and feels after washing and wearing and um, yeah, I think it'll be great. A 100% wool sweater for my husband, so he knows I love him. <laughs> so my last work in progress to share with you is a sweater for myself, which I just can't help myself. If I'm knitting a sweater for someone else, I want to cast on one for myself too. <laughs> so I cast on a sweater a few days ago, and this is the brick pattern by Claire Lee. And this is a free pattern on Ravelry. So uh, if you don't already have this in your library, you should go get it and add it to your Ravelry library because uh, so far I'm really liking this pattern. It's a really simple top-down raglan construction and it's a worst written for worsted weight. And I love it so far. <laughs> so, um, this is what I have done so far. I've, uh, like I said, it's knit top down and I've finished the entire yoke. I've separated for the sleeves and I've just started on the body. So it hasn't, I've only done one row across here. So yes, I, I love it. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> So it is another uh, worsted weight sweater pattern. And I like worsted weight sweaters because they're quick and I have a lot of worsted weight yarn, so I want to use it up. And uh, yeah, this is, of course I don't have the tag with me. So the yarn that I'm using is Yarn B, soft and sleek, low pill fiber. So this is from Hobby Lobby, yep. And the color is, there it is, Tobacco, number 210, which is amazing, okay? And it's showing up on screen really true to color. Um, you can see I have the rest of it right over here on the shelf. Um, yeah, I... Okay, so yellow is my favorite color, <laughs> but it's really hard to wear yellow, like yellow, yellow. So I like this goldish brown, yellowy color. It just, I'm really excited to wear this when it's finished. Um, yeah, so the yarn is really soft. Um, in a in a sleek way soft and sleek wow but it doesn't feel slippery and it doesn't feel plasticky um, 
it also doesn't feel like wool. You know, it feels like a, you can tell that it's acrylic yarn because it's not just the, how do I describe this? It feels like acrylic yarn, but it doesn't feel like plastic. You can tell that it's not wool, okay? Uh, but the stitches look, they just look really nice. It's knitting up so well. So yeah, I'm very excited. So I'm knitting these on a US size six, and I believe the pattern calls for a US size nine. So I do knit a little swatch. I don't ever wash my swatches or do any of that with it, which with acrylic yarn, I don't know that washing would really change it much, but with wool, um, depending on the type of wool you're using can bloom and stretch and, and do different things. But with acrylic yarn, I haven't noticed it really change much after washing just because of how it's, you know, the materials that it's made out of. So I'll knit a swatch to check my gauge, but I won't ever wash it because in, in my experience, it doesn't change much. Uh, and then what I do is I, I rip out the swatch and I use the yarn to make the sweater. So my gauge is off from what she calls for in the pattern. In the pattern, it's supposed to be in four inches, 18 stitches and 28 rows. I remember this because I just checked it again this morning and I'm getting 16 stitches and 25 rows. So it's not off by a lot, but enough that I'm being very careful to stop and measure my sweater to make sure that it's still going to fit. And I don't want it to be too big. I don't want it to be too small. And so far, we're good. So I'm knitting the size large, which is for a 41 inch bust. And I'm getting really close to what the pattern calls for. Even though my gauge is off by a little bit, um, I'm not off by much on the measurements, which is really good. So yes, I'm very excited. Uh, you do knit the uh, front uh, shorter than in the back. So there is a little bit of shaping there. You cast on and knit flat for a little bit to get the neck shaping and then join in the round. So the beginning of the round is right here where my stitch marker is. So it is in the front of the sweater, but since there's no color work, there's no striping, uh, I mean, you can't even tell. So it'll be fine. And I'm sure we'll come back later and pick up to do the, uh, the ribbing around the collar. Since we didn't knit it in the beginning, we must come back later, right? <laughs> I don't always read ahead in my patterns. So yeah, I'm really excited and I can't forget to keep working on my husband's sweater because what usually happens is I cast one on for me and then I completely stop knitting on the other one. So yeah, I love it. I'm so excited. I want it finished now. So we went to town and stopped at the craft stores and the hardware stores and went to the mall and had lunch. We made a whole day out of it. And of course, while shopping at the craft stores, I picked up some more yarn for myself for a sweater. Yeah, whatever, right? Okay, so uh, this is a new yarn. I haven't, new to me, I don't know how long it has been carried at the store, but I just noticed it this weekend and I really liked the color and I'm curious about the com composition. So it's more yarn bee and it's called denim in color. And the colorway is taupe number four. So you can see it's, it's brown and white marl together, which is super pretty. So I, I was drawn in by the color and I thought, oh my gosh, I really want to make the Weekender by Andrea Mowry out of this yarn. 
So I was thinking of making the Weekender out of a really dark navy color. And then I thought, well, do you really want to wear a dark, meant to be oversized sweater? Will that be flattering? Because I'm seeing most people knit them up in lighter colors, like a light gray marled with a dark gray, but they're not like dark sweaters. So now I'm thinking I'm going to make my weekender out of this because it'll be a nice light color. And it's, and it has that marled look, which is what Andrea Mowry was going for in her pattern. So right here you can see this is 50% acrylic, 50% cotton, which I'm curious about. I've knit with acrylic, I've knit with cotton, but not a 50-50 acrylic cotton. So I'm going to do a little bit of research to see what happens to garments when you knit them out of yarn like this. Is it going to stretch? Is it not going to stretch? Right? Because those are things I need to keep in mind. I've knit two sweaters now out of merino nylon fingering weight yarn, and they've both stretched. And I would have known that ahead of time had I done a little bit of research. So I knit my sweater to the length I wanted, and then after watching, after washing, it grew. So if I'm knitting an oversized sweater and I knit it to be big, and then I wash it and it gets even bigger, that's the last thing I want. So I'm going to do a little bit of research on how this type of yarn will behave so that I can plan ahead, <laughs> which would be better. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is just the taupe color. They also had a, a gray marl, a blue marl, a green marl, and uh, they were all marled with white, and they were all really pretty. But I'm in this, okay, so the taupe, here and this here and I mean I'm being drawn to these neutral neutral brown related colors I don't know why but I'm loving it so yeah I'm embracing it and I'm going with it Okay guys, so that is it for the crafty content. So I'm going to talk about my running and fitness for the last bit of this episode. So uh, like I said before, I like to walk on the treadmill with my knitting and then afterward run. And the walking is meant to be a warm up for the running. So I am in Texas and we were not hit at all by any of the winter storms. <laughs> Um, so the temperature here has been fluctuating between below freezing to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's wreaking havoc on everyone's allergies and the flu season and every kind of sniffle you can think of, which is crazy. Some of the trees are blossoming with their flowers. Some of them have yet to even grow buds for the leaves. So it's odd. It's, it's odd. Anyway, what does that have to do with my running? Let me tell you. <laughs> Some days I've been able to run outside because it's been really nice weather, warm and sunny. And some days I've had to stay inside and run on the treadmill because it's just too cold or too windy. So <laughs> I have my bullet journal here. And this month, so far, so I uh, keep track of my running by month, at least for now I do. <laughs> so yeah, I did finally run three miles. That's my first three mile run of the year. And as you can see with the color coding, I ran that outside, which was nice in the fact that I got to get outside and get some sunlight and breathe in all the pollen. <laughs> No, it was, it was an enjoyable run, except it was very windy that day, which I did not 
anticipate. And that's a thing that I get out the door and I run down the street a little bit and then I go to turn and I turn down that road and all of a sudden I'm being blown over by the wind. And it's like, okay. So I use mapmyrun.com and I'll get on the computer and I'll map out a route and I'll pay attention to things like, is that a road I want to run down based on the conditions I see when I drive down that road? Like some streets are known for their stray dogs and being not the best part of town. So I don't necessarily want to put myself in danger. So this is the first thing I consider. The second thing I consider is um, elevation. So when you're using Map My Run and you track a route around town, it'll also track the elevation. And this town is not flat. It is very hilly. <laughs> um, and then the third thing I pay attention to is the distance. So how long of a run do I actually want to go on? So I mapped out this route where I was going to go down this street, go one block over, come back, go one block over, go down, go, okay. And the whole length was like six blocks. So I was going to go down six blocks, over one, back six blocks, over one, whatever. I was trying something new, but I've driven down those streets and they looked really good. And I thought, sure, I could run down those. Except that first turn I made to go down the road, the wind, I, oh my gosh, it was so strong that day. So I had to just throw that route out completely. I can't run down. If I turn down a road and the wind is about ready to knock me over, I just can't do it. So... I knew I wanted to run three miles. That was my goal that day, which I achieved. I did the three miles, but I pretty much just had to make it up as I went because the wind was insane. On some streets, it was pretty sheltered. So I tried running down those streets and on others, it was like, it was like a wind tunnel. There was no way I was going to be able to make any kind of headway in that wind. So the route that I went on was this weird wobbly figure eight thing. <laughs> but yeah, just basically at every intersection, I decided, do I keep going down this road or should I turn? <laughs> Somehow I got three miles in. Anyway, a long way to say, uh, it was an adventure. Uh, as soon as plan A wasn't going to work out, I said, I'm not going to let this be a defeat. I'm going to get my run in somehow. I'm not going to let the wind stop me. And I did. It was just interesting. <laughs> and what makes that a little bit challenging is that I map my run out ahead of time number one, so that I know where I'm going and, and all those things are considered. But also number two, my husband knows where I'm going. I've had to call him for help before because I have asthma and I take my inhaler before I leave. But sometimes I just, I just need it again. And I don't always take it with me because it's big and bulky and pockets on workout gear. You know how they are. Anyway, so I have had to call him for help before and have him bring me my inhaler or just pick me up and take me home because I don't think I'm going to make it and whatnot. Uh, if you've ever rolled your ankle before and you're three miles away from your house, you, you know how annoying that is. So, so I also map it out so that he knows where I'm going and he can come get me if I need help. Anyway, <laughs> long story, but but you've got the picture. Um, yeah, so I've ran about 21 miles this month, which is pretty good considering that's what I ran in January. So I have four days left in the month to try to beat my January mileage. And I think I can do it. If I just do a couple miles on the treadmill, no problem. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is that I took a quite a few days off here. Like there's three days in a row where I didn't run and another three days where I didn't run. And I don't, I don't like to do that because I notice 
If I take breaks like that, I am less motivated to keep working out because I'm like, well, I could be knitting. I could just be playing video games or watching TV. No, you need to work out, Alicia. So I don't like to take long breaks because I lose motivation. Uh, but also it does make it harder to start back up again. It's like my body has gotten used to sitting around and, and resting and it's harder to get back into it. So I don't like to do that too often. But those days that I, some of those days that I wasn't running, um, Michael and I have been helping my parents move. So we have been lifting boxes and lifting furniture and carrying things around. So I've still been active, just not running specifically. So just, but I knew I didn't want to overdo it. Like yesterday we helped them move really big furniture and I said, there's no way that I'm doing a workout because that will be my workout. And it was, <laughs> it was, we got to carry all the heavy stuff, which is fine. We just had to prepare for it. So anyway, that is it for fitness. Um, I have been pretty much um, maintaining my weight. I wouldn't say that I've lost weight. I've pretty much been ma maintaining. But I've mentioned before that my weight tends to fluctuate quite a bit from day to day. Like a two pound gain and then a four pound loss and then a one pound gain and then a three pound loss and then and then a five pound gain and then a which is crazy. So either my scale is broken or <laughs> anyway, so now what's happening is I'm getting less fluctuation. So there's maybe a one pound difference from day to day up or down, which seems better to me. Like the drastic fluctuation kind of scares me. Like there was a five pound change in one day and I was like, what happened? And I had pizza that day. And I was like, is that really from eating pizza? A five pound gain in one day? It doesn't seem right. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that it's it's still going up and down, but it's not doing it so drastically, which makes me feel better. I don't know that it's any better, but it makes me feel better. So if you've stuck with me to the end, thank you so much. I do have a favor to ask. I have a thread open over in the Ravelry group. So D Hard House podcast group on Ravelry. I have a thread open asking for uh, tutorial video suggestions. So I'm going to be making some knitting, crochet, sewing, whatever you guys ask for, um, tutorial videos. So if you have any suggestions or recommendations on things that you would like to see tutorial videos for, let me know over in the Ravelry group by just replying to the thread. Uh, I've already gotten some requests for short row heels, which I'm going to record very soon for you. So you can look for a short row heel tutorial. Uh, and if you'd like to see any other tutorial videos, like I said, let me know by commenting in the Ravelry group in the tutorial video thread. Okay, so that's all I have to talk about today. So I'm excited to get some new videos rolling for you guys. I won't, I won't give you any spoilers. <laughs> I will let them all be surprises. And uh, yeah, so look for new types of videos on the channel. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. I'm open to suggestions. Otherwise, Happy crafting, be healthy, and I'll see you next time.